So Chris here with South Carolina Gun School. We're out here for Train and Learn 2022 outside of St. Louis with Ryan and Andrew from Fit to Fight Republic. Right, these are people that will kick your ass. All right, they got to show us some stuff, uh, some hand-to-hand -hand stuff is mainly what we did. Um, I know I've, I've followed y'all for a really, really long time, so I know we met at SHOT Show 2020. Yeah. Um, we're not that far away from each no. other. I got to get up there to y'all and really start stepping up my game. I know I've started personally taking some jiu-jitsu, trying to awesome. actually learn a little nice. bit, get some of this weight off and stuff. So, yeah, solid. Yeah, it's been, it's been a great experience. I was did a lot of researching. A lot of people made some good recommendations, and I looked out and found a really, really good place to that's go. That's great. Man. That's good. That's good. So Getting in the door is the hardest step, I think. That right. First and time, like... I was, I was, I kind of felt like one of my students coming into the gun class, really yep. nervous, not really knowing what to expect, because um, I have heard horror stories about some schools where you pretty much just end up being a punching bag. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, everybody's been very open arms. Everybody's been very, very helpful. So that's that's, that's a, awesome. a great, great thing. I don't know, y'all got two, one in Gastonia, one in Charlotte, correct? Yep. Yep. We have uh, the, those centers that we own, and then we have an affiliate kind of group where we have. Uh, training centers around the country that are affiliated with us and kind of run our programs and their training centers. Okay. Uh, mostly East Coast, but there's there's a few kind of Midwest and a little west of, of, of that. Um, and then obviously we travel and, and teach all over the planet. So what does it take for somebody that was curious about being affiliated? What do they have to do? Email her. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Amber at fittofight.com. I can um, call in Grace. You know, it, it, it's like um, we, we look for training centers that uh, have similar mindsets, uh, similar goals. We, we, we don't, like, we keep our training groups relatively small. Um, we, we have an application process. We turn most places down because we just don't feel like they'll be happy with us and we'll be happy with them. Right, you, you got to make sure it's That's right. I understand. That's right. Yeah. So, um, because we, we try to have a holistic approach to self-defense, self-protection, self-preservation, whatever you want to call it. Um, and, and most people want to specialize in some kind of niche, which I think is great. you got to have those, those right. people out there. Um, but, but we try to, to, to bring in people that are willing to get uncomfortable or willing to do exactly what you were just talking about. Like, okay, I understand you, you might have boxed for 10 years, but if you're going to work with us, you're going to have to learn to wrestle. You're going to have to learn to, to, to work off your back. You're going to have to learn to shoot a little bit. You, know? um, you don't have to be a rock star in any of those things. But you you have to have experienced it. I can't have I can't have an instructor teaching a gun disarm that's never shot a gun. Right. Like, right. It, it, if you don't know what that sounds like, feels like, smells like, the first time you find out shouldn't be when you try to grab the the, the barrel of somebody else's gun and that thing goes off in your hand. You can't be teaching other people that. So we want people to our instructors, our training centers, our affiliates, whatever, to kind of have an experience in, in all of those modalities um, and not really be a specialist in any of them. They, they can come in with that specialist kind of background, but they're going to at least have to, to, to touch their toes in these other things. So my, my one question I have that I get a lot of people asking me is, what is a good self-defense training hand-to-hand -hand wise that someone should take that's going to keep it kind of realistic i know for me i've always felt jujitsu is kind of a little bit more closer to real life because you see you watch a lot of you watch a lot of videos with people where they fight and they usually end up on the ground because they're throwing crazy haymakers trying to knock somebody out and end up on the ground i mean i know y'all also teach some jujitsu and stuff oh, yeah. so is there anything other anything other than jujitsu to keep it i think i think jujitsu i think judo Wrestling is hard because it's hard to find a good wrestling program for adults. Um, right. it's, it's pretty hard on the body. Uh, I think it's good because you have the striking elements, but you also have the vertical clinch work. Clinch, um, yeah. It's a little bit different, and there's some things that you know that happen in Muay Thai that I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend for a weapons-based environment. Um, but just understanding how to push, pull, and make space, full space, those kinds of things. To, to open up for striking and little trips and stuff, um, but it's like anything else. It's like well, it's like in the firearms industry. You need to, to check out the instructor and then go visit, talk to the people that, that train there, watch the classes, and make sure that the the overall culture and feel and aesthetic kind of matches 
what it is that you're looking for. Because while I love jujitsu, I've been doing jujitsu since 1998. Um, there are jujitsu places out there that are wholly focused on competition, for example. Right. And there are things in competition that just do not translate well for self defense. Right. Um, and so if if you go to it, it's not that you won't get some some things that are are, are applicable, but if if seventy percent of it is more geared towards scoring points or um, following a rule set from some organization, then that may not be the place for you if you're your goal is just self-defense, right? right? If I, okay. like, touching hands and just sitting on my butt is not good for self-defense. Right. Um, so I would just talk to the coaches, talk to the instructors, talk to the, the students that are there, find out why they're there and, and what they are trying to accomplish. And then I would watch class, take a class. If, if, if and this goes for any, any training center, if they won't let you watch a class, if they won't let you, like, audit a class and talk to people or whatever, that's probably not the place. That was one thing that I was told. I don't know if you know Instructor Z. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, he, great dude. Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, I think yeah, he's done some stuff with y'all. Yeah, yeah, great so guy. He, he was the one that recommended because sure. you know he was from the Greenville area, and I reached out, came in and did a class at my place, and I was like, you know, where's a good place to go? And he gave me two, and one was a little bit too far to drive for everything I've got going on. So, but the place I'm going now, like I said, it's been very great. He he was like, look, he, now we reached out, we talked. He's like, come in, try it out. He's like, come in, try it out. He's like, no charge. He's like, try out a couple classes, see if it's going to work for you. What I like about him, too, is when, when we're rolling and grappling and stuff, and he's coming over and working, you know, he'll bounce from people to people. And one thing, he kind of relates it to my industry. He's, he's like, all right, he's trying to get your gun. You need to get him yeah. off of it. Yeah. So it's really cool. I'm trying to correlate to what I'm doing every time. So, and that's where it's different. Try different schools, go to different places that are in the area, and, and to get a feel for these different people and how they how they instruct and how they relate to you. Because um, what you want to find out is if I if I train here, do I have to be the filter? Is it going to be on me to figure out what's self defense and what's not? Because that's going to be hard if you don't have a basis to, to come from. Um, but if your instructor has more of an idea of that kind of thing and is willing to be that filter for you and help you know, okay, put it in this context for you when you're rolling and think about it this way. That's that's so much more beneficial for you and, and less reinventing the wheel. Yeah. So I know you said you've been doing it since 98. How long have you been in it, Amber? Uh, 2004. I started oh, wow. It too. Okay. Did you pick up things fairly quickly? Um, I know I've seen different experience levels or different yeah. experience with that. Some people pick it up quickly. Some people it takes I, a little bit longer. I feel like I, I picked it up pretty quickly, but I also know when you're getting started, there's just this time where it, it just does not make sense. And then all of a sudden you start figuring it out and then you just like for whatever reason it kind of stops making sense again um and that's where a lot of people end up kind of dropping out they feel like they were making this progress and they hit this next level and and they're they feel like they're back to square one there's there's a lot of push and pull with it there's a lot of bad days good days um but it's ultimately about looking at the patterns and, and Remembering that it's not you versus the next person, it's you versus how you were last week or last month or last year to, to kind of help keep you going. That's what, And that's what I've told people too is it's not, like it's been little things that I've done in the class. Like there's one guy that he mainly works with, has me working with, he's a purple belt. And usually I'm always getting my ass kicked with him, but there's been these little, small little things in that battle that I've done right, like, and I've been uh, able to get that yeah. upper hand, and I'm yeah. like, the, and, but Those knowing, are the things to hold on to. Right, and then knowing too that this is one thing where it's, I know I'm probably going to be getting my ass kicked for a year, maybe a year and a half before I really start picking things up, and that was one thing Roy and I talked about, and he's lost a lot of students because of that. Yeah, it's hard. It, well, and it's, we, uh, I was just talking, we're out here at uh, Land from, uh, Rob's Guns is, you know, the, the owner of the store we've been using and the land and everything out here and um, just talking with uh, Rob's wife. <laughs> um, and, and she was talking about trying to learn and, and train all this stuff. And um, it's hard because the people close to you want you to, to be able to, to get all of this knowledge right now. Right. But that's just not how it works. That's not how anything works. Right. The first time you fire a gun, it's mostly going to suck. And if you can get that person to just have a better grip, even though the bullet's still flying nowhere near the target, you've made a little bit of an improvement. And now maybe next week or next month we can work on better trigger control or, or you know, at whatever. You, you progress things. You can't give everybody everything right there that first day, that first time. It's never, you're never going to own the information that way. It's like bench pressing, right? The, the, the first time you go to lift weights, you've never bench pressed before. If you're just benching the floor, next time you're going to five pounds. Next time 
you come, maybe you put on 10 pound plates. And then maybe you stay there for a little while, you know. And, but gradually you're adding, you're building, you get stronger, and then you're going to hit a, 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 a kind of a plateau again while your body catches up. Well, jujitsu training, whatever, it's all the same. And if you're not, if you're not failing, like if you're not getting your ass handed to you sometimes, you're not really training. There's no, there's no way you're getting better if, if you're not being pushed to the point of failing. Exactly. So No, that, that, that all correlates into the gun world as well, too. Especially like with Kurt and some of the stuff he was talking about on the pistol range. He was, push yourself. He was like, push yourself to the point where you are missing. Now you know what you need to work on and fix and everything. So I, I really appreciate y'all coming Absolutely. out. I thoroughly enjoyed working with y'all. The knowledge that y'all brought out, the knowledge you gave us has been absolutely tremendous. I'm definitely going to have to get y'all out of my place. Like I love it. We're next door neighbors, so yeah, we got to get y'all out. i got to get up there, but go and check these guys out. All right. If you need want to learn, these are the ones to learn for, um, learn from. And like I said, I've followed really long time. I've loved your philosophies around things, watching your videos and stuff. It's been absolutely awesome. Uh, if y'all got a YouTube page as well. Yeah, Fit to Fight. Uh, you can check us out on YouTube. Fight, uh, Fit to Fight Republic on Instagram uh, and Facebook as well. There you go. Go check them out. Always remember, if you're not shooting, you're reloading. If you're not reloading, you're fighting. If you're not fighting, you're dead. Train to live. See you on the road.